Praise the Lord. We're going to read Psalms 46 together responsibly. Welcome to church. Uh, let's put our hands together for our online church, wherever they are. Uh, Birmingham, you're welcome. Lake Kisru, you're welcome. Uh, put your hands together. Let's appreciate our global church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to read Psalms 46 responsibly, and then we'll take the last verse together. The river of restoration is here, and everyone's need will be met supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'll take verse 1, and then you take verse 2, and then we alternate like that. Okay. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though it, the mountains shake with its swelling. God is in the midst of her. Amen. She shall not be moved. Amen. God shall help you and I just at the break of dawn. Somebody say amen to that. Okay, read verse 6. The Lord is, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yeah. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. I'd like us to repeat verse 10 together, congregation. It's a very powerful verse. I'll be a... Now verse 11 together again. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Praise the Lord. Now if you look at verse 5, Holy Spirit, let your word reach each one. Let it heal and transform everyone hearing in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 5. Verse 4, sorry. Verse 4. Verse 4. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. In the New Testament, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, this verse is saying this river is going to make people glad. Whatever has been a point of sorrow... Whatever has been a point of shame, whatever has been a point of grief, the river of restoration is bringing gladness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That means that area of sorrow, that area of secret tears, painful tears, as the river of restoration reaches that matter, it will turn the situation around and there will be gladness in the name of Jesus Christ. There will be rejoicing in the name of Jesus Christ. There will be jubilation in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Joel chapter 2 from verse 23, a prophetic scripture on God's mercy, God's hand of restoration. He said, be glad. Tell your neighbor, be glad. He said, be glad you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully. Rain represents the anointing in this context. It represents that pouring of the spirit. And today as the oil of gladness comes upon you, uh, you will see restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain faithfully and it will cause the rain to come down for you. God will cause the rain to come down for you. The rain of restoration. He said the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. I, I, I consider this as the first month of the second half of the year. Now this rain represents the anointing. Now before the, the restoration begins to manifest physically, there's an outpouring of the spirit. It's like what we have in the physical with the physical rain that rests on the soil and what is in the soil begins to germinate and produce. The same way as this anointing, the rainfall of the anointing comes upon us, the seeds in our lives, your business, your career, your destiny, that has been dormant, dry, empty, stagnated. That rain, we, cost, we stimulate it and there will be growth. Amen. Things that were dry and dead and dusty, we begin to yield fruits like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. It will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain 
and the later rain. Now verse 24 it now says, the threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. Verse 25. So, because of that rainfall, because of the uh, outpouring of the anointing of restoration, it says, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I sent among you. Something went wrong. They opened the door for judgment. Opened the door for attacks. And that's why God's mercy brings restoration. When we take wrong business steps, financial steps, or maybe literal sin, you lived in sin, you refused to repent, you know, and God was asking you to stop it, you know, you just kept on. Somewhere along the line, the enemy hijacks that process and begins to plunder and begins to attack. And then the devil steals people's time, steals their joy, steals their health through sickness and disease, steal opportunities because you've opened the door. He says, um, either bricks and edge, the serpent will bite. But God's mercy brings restoration. So that we restore to you the years. So this morning, I, I, I have the faith that whatever you have lost, five years, seven years, there will be restoration this season. The month of August you are driving into, you will experience business restoration. You will experience career restoration. You will experience marital restoration. For some people it's your health. As the anointing comes upon you in the name of Jesus, the fountain of that sickness will dry up. That sickness is not unto death. Your body begins to repair. That which was taken from you, that is yours. I declare that the anointing of restoration will commandeer it back into your life. Like it happened to Nebuchadnezzar. When the mercy of God hit him, the things that had left his life, the honor, the dignity, the glory. Scripture says all those things began to return. I pray that the finances that is yours that left, it will return in the name of Jesus Christ. The dignity is returning. The glory is returning. You are reestablishing your throne in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say restoration. Somebody cry it out loud. Restoration. In the first service, we talked about restoration by mercy. By the mercy of God. In this service, we're talking about restoration by the blood covenant. By the blood covenant. One of the major cries of the blood of Jesus is that his people be restored. He knows that there's a thief. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he's saying the enemy must not have the last say over your marriage. The enemy must not have the last say over your destiny. He now comes with the anointing for restoration to get you back. What was taken from you? There's a cry by the blood of Jesus for people to be restored. Hebrews 12 verse 22. Hebrews 12 verse 22. Hebrews 12 verse 22. Just as a reminder that the blood of Jesus has a voice. It's crying. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. This is Mount Zion. Anywhere God's people gather in his name. We are not gathered to Yemi David or to your own name. We are gathered to the name of Jesus Christ. So this qualifies as Mount Zion. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. Angels are here with us. Glory to God. Verse 23, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. To God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. Verse 24 to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. The blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So we know that the blood of Jesus is speaking. We have an example in the life of Abel. If you can go back to Genesis I think Genesis 4 verse 8 we all know a, a I think you know the story of Cain and Abel. I'm, I'm trying to emphasize the fact that the, the blood of Jesus is crying out this morning and we're going to cry with it and there'll be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm too persuaded that this week people will have harvest of great testimonies in their lives. 
Some of them will just shock you, shake you, and you just be quiet. You don't even know where to start the song from because the mercy of God will overwhelm you. The glory of God will overwhelm you. The peace of God will overwhelm you. The kindness of God will overwhelm you in the name of Jesus Christ. Only Satan will be disappointed this week in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. There will be doors of opportunities that were shut before. They are opening wide now in the name of Jesus. Those calls that seem shut out, they refuse to call you, they refuse to respond to you. We release angels of restoration into the city and to the field. The calls are coming back. The opportunities are coming back. The doors are coming, opening wider in the name of Jesus Christ. That body matter, that your health matter that has been said that, oh, we don't know what to do. The Holy Ghost knows what to do this morning. Your body is healed in the name of Jesus. Someone is hearing me online. I don't know who you are. You are battling with one sickness or the other and you are even tired. Today, receive strength in the name of Jesus. I speak to your ankle bones. I speak to your internal organs. In the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. And I curse that sickness. Like Jesus cursed the fig tree. I declare that that sickness dries off from the roots. I proclaim your healing now. Receive your healings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, as Isaac flourished in the time of famine, covenant people will flourish in this time of famine. Over this congregation, in this anointing service, I proclaim the favor of God on your head. Fresh favor on your head. That favor will settle you maritally. That favor will attract resources. That favor will open the right doors. Receive it in the name of of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is crying for restoration. So now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Hmm. Verse 9. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He thought he had escaped the matter. He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper. But see verse 10. And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So here, right from Genesis, we know that blood cries. This was what the writer of Hebrews was quoting in Hebrews 12 when we say, when he said, we have come to Mount Zion, uh, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So he's quoting from here. The blood of Abel was crying out for vengeance. And guess what? God responded, isn't it? There was vengeance on Cain. So when the blood of Jesus Christ is crying for restoration over your head, God has to double answer. God has to triple answer. God has to... God has to God has to God has to uh -huh, continue eight poo nine poo <laughs> God has to thousand poo I mean the judgment landed on Cain he said the voice of thy brother's blood he's crying and he said you shall be a vagabond and a fugitive so now in the new testament we have a better blood Oh, everlasting covenant. That blood is crying. If there's anything dying in your system, in your organ that needs to be alive, as this unction comes on you today, it will come back alive in Jesus' name. Dead businesses are coming back alive. Uh, stagnated destinies are gaining motion this morning. By the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The voice of thy brother's blood is crying from the ground. <laughs> Zechariah 9, I think verse 10. So we are trusting God that the blood of the covenant will speak this service over everyone that cares to receive it. Zechariah 9, 11 is crying mercy. He said, as for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, what will he do? I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Waterless pit talks about grave. Something that you are, I mean, dying. It could be sickness. It could be family death. Whatever. That waterless pit. This morning, 
I'm here as a servant of God, as a prophet over this great assembly. That the blood of Jesus Christ is rescuing you from your waterless pit. A pit represents a place of downfall, a place of no hope. It's, a pit is below ground zero, isn't it? It's in. God is saying your resurrection is here. This week we are entering into there will be resurrection testimonies. There will be sparks of restoration over this church, over families in this church by the blood of the covenant. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. In place of mourning, there will be dancing. In place of sorrow, there will be joy. It shall turn out for a testimony. In the name of Jesus. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your people free. 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 Now look at verse 12. <laughs> Return to this stronghold, which is that blood covenant. You prisoners of hope. Even today, 28th of uh, June, July, sorry. I declare that that blood will restore you. How many? Double. Ooh. You are experiencing double restoration. Say a louder amen, please. The blood of Jesus in this service is speaking double restoration. Of people's dignity, finances, destiny. Ah, you labored for 30 years, 25 years, 15 years. It looked like some of you have sat down one day in your room. Ah, it's like I wasted those 30 years or 20 years. The Holy Spirit is saying to you, no, it's not wasted. I have my account and I'm restoring you double. I, I, God is restoring you double. It will happen in such a way that another time you will sit down. And regrets will be far from you in the name of Jesus. The rewards of labors of yesteryears that have been taken from you. Restoration is bringing the rewards back to you and I. Receive double restoration by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood. He said I will restore to you double. I love this double restoration. Or it repeated in Isaiah 61 verse 6. Double restoration. Double restoration. Uh, Isaiah 61 verse 6. So there's something about double. And please, when we say double, the double means double. That's the minimum. There's sevenfold restoration. There's also a thousandfold restoration. But the least is double. And in my own life, I have had moments that I trusted God for double restoration. And ladies and gentlemen, when it happened, you can tell that this is exactly double than with some over. So when we say double, we're not being religious. Elisha did double the miracles that Elijah did. When they calculated the major breakthroughs he did, or sorry, um, um, signs and wonders he did, it was times two of that of Elijah. So when God says double, he's not confused. So I, I see people experiencing double in their finances. Uh -huh, double. And some people here trusting God with the fruit of the womb. It's your access to your twins. Somebody say twins. Say amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, twins. I mean, except you want to tell God not to do two. But if you, are, if you can receive that, it's double. For some people to be triplets in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, he said, but you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. But we qualify for that in the new covenant. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall boast. Verse 7, glory to God. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Amen. Oh, I receive it. Uh, where I was experiencing disgrace and shame, the power of the blood of Jesus is bringing double honor in the name of Jesus. Instead of confusion, insanity, uh, mental anguish, you begin to rejoice in your portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Double. Everlasting joy shall be there. So you see, it mingled with celebration. Praising God. I was sharing a testimony from our UK church. They had sent it to me. You know, I had to ask them to send it again uh, yesterday night. A couple came to see me after one of our meetings. I think it was in Manchester or so. I said, they're trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And I just said, 
go ahead and begin to give thanks. And then they said, bam, that was it. They have their baby now. It was like, it was like, it was like, like that. I mean, no special prayer. Just go and be given thanks. And they sent the message that they have their baby now. God has done it. So whatever I'm proclaiming over you as priestly blessings, your life will manifest it well. You will not return to me empty-handed in the name of Jesus. You will return with your restoration testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's, let's get ready to pray. Um, Isaiah 60, verse 1. And then we pray together. We see that the blood of Jesus Christ said, or 61, sorry, 61, verse 1. That same 61 from verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit, okay, capital S. The Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to, to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal. So the anointing heals the broken heart. So the anointing coming today is not just for like physical blessings. Many people will receive emotional wholeness by the balm in Gilead, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He said to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty. That's why we declare things over God's people. To proclaim liberty. We proclaim liberty to set people free. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. The anointing this morning will comfort anyone mourning. Whatever area it is. His hand will bring a change. His glory will transform the situation. You will be comforted by the help of the Holy Spirit. He said, he said to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3 now. Verse 3. He said to console those who mourn in Zion. To give them what? Beauty. Okay. So the comfort is not just ek bele, ek bele, No. It will turn the ashes into what? Beauty. The oil of joy for mourning. Garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called trees of righteousness the establishment of the Lord and that God will be glorified over their lives. This is how your own testimony will be as we enter the month of August you will be seen as the planting of the Lord your business as the planting of the Lord, your family as the planting of the Lord, your life as the planting of the Lord and it glorifies him not without trees, not dry trees, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. How do we walk in this? Number one, a cry for mercy. A cry for mercy. <laughs> when you have walked with God for a while, one day you realize that all that you accomplish is not by your temperament. All this, I'm a choleric. We know how to plan things and arrange things you realize that it doesn't meet it. It's not your age. When you begin to see people that are half your age doing times 10 of what you have been dreaming of 30 years ago, you see how, should I say life, knocks down all those props you have, my experience, my age, my expertise. You realize that we are all vessels of mercy. It's not of me that will it. It's not made that run. It's of God that showed mercy. Oh, I did something. The thing you did, the, if you look at it very well, the mercy of God was involved in your ability to do it. I'm telling you, if you can think, you will see the mercy of God. It's just like giving. He ministers seed to the sower. What if you want to sow and the seed is not there? He ministers seed and then give me bread and then multiplies the seed. So don't say it's me. It's not you. It's the mercy. And the more you depend on his mercy, the more you saw on eagle's wings. His glory, he will never share with your temperament, with your experience. He has knocked me down severally like that. You look at all your props. You see people that don't have those things excelling. You now know that it's not by those things at all. It's God's mercy. Mercy will find you today. And I want to drop this also. As those things begin to manifest, don't go back into your Egypt. Learn to give God all the glory. 
Don't, after two years again, be priding in yourself. I've been doing it for 35 years. I know how to do those things. Don't be like Nebuchadnezzar and go into exile for seven years unto madness. All the glory must go to him. The growth of this church is by his mercy. The recharge conference, of course, you know it's the mercy of God. The flood that took place on Wednesday. You know that Wednesday? The words of the conference. We nearly moved the conference away from this venue that day. It was on the table to shift it to another location. But the Holy Spirit said, no, go ahead. And everything calmed down. And not one rain till we finished. In spite of the things happening around us. <laughs> when you look at that, you forget all your calculations. The mercy of God. You know, I used to have um, um, typhoid fever growing up. I was very short. It was typhoid and malaria that elongated me. My mom would say, oh no, oh no. Whatever that means. When you are sick like that, after three weeks of sickness, you are now taller. Oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I nearly died. During my first work, I couldn't take a particular paper because I had to be rushed to the hospital. So when you remember those things, your head must be correct. And you give God all the glory. And when you are looking for anything from him, Lord, let your mercy prevail over this matter. Great is his mercy towards me. Rise up on your faith. Hallelujah.